Rick here with CaptainCarp.com and me and my boy Tom here are going to show you how to make a smoker out of a file cabinet. Now I'm not the guy who came up with this idea but I'm going to walk you step by step on how it's done. This has been around for a long time. I'm a four drawer vertical file cabinet is a great foundation, a great starting point for building a smoker. It's, um, it's, it's actually pretty nice. So. I'm going to show you how it's done and I'm going to show you how to smoke some uh, fish because I've got 25 pounds of salmon that I brought back from Alaska and it needs some love and attention. I'm going to give it to it. So, alright, without further ado, we're going to get started. All the items you need to build this smoker are listed in the description of this video, including links and prices. But first you're going to need a step drill bit, a corded drill, an electric hot plate with a thousand watts of power or more, an old cooking pot or a coffee can, and you're going to need some barbecue thermometers. For the shelving, you're going to want 10 to 15 16 inch sections of 2 by 1 wood. You're going to need some chicken wire or hardware cloth. You're going to need some wire cutters for cutting coat hangers. And you're going to need a couple coat hangers. Some cooling racks are also very helpful. And if you're going to cook chicken, you're going to want a 1 inch drill bit. A four foot roll of duct insulation can also be helpful in cold weather. Once you have everything you need, the first step is to drill holes in the bottom of the top three drawers, and only the top three drawers. These holes are going to let heat and smoke circulate through the file cabinet. I put about 12 holes in the bottom of each drawer, and I put the holes along the side. Now one of the things to look out for is that there is a, a cross section on the bottom of the drawer on the underside and you see here I accidentally started to drill into it so uh, just be cautious that you don't uh, to destroy the structural integrity of the door also be careful that you don't overheat your drill or drill bit now the most labor intensive part of making this smoker is drilling the holes in the drawers I've got 12 holes in each uh, one of the top three drawers I've got six on one side six on the other this uh, doesn't take that long I mean you could get it all done in 45 minutes without too much of a rush except that my drill keeps overheating right now it is hot to the touch I mean and that's not good for the drill You're, you'll destroy your drill that way so um, if you had two drills where you could switch them on and off and let one cool down while you're using the other one uh, that would help but I don't have one drill so I'm doing six holes then I have to let my drill sit for about 10-15 minutes and then I do six more holes and I have to let it sit and, and it's uh, that's taking the most time is letting the drill cool off so anyway if you have two drills it'll go a lot faster after you've drilled holes in the bottom of the top three drawers put a single small hole in the bottom front of the bottom drawer this is to let the electrical cord out for your uh, heating element and of course you can drop it on the ground as well and that seems to not do any harm but uh, once you got the hole drilled, you put the heating element in the bottom and uh, feed it through like so, and it, and it works out, out uh, just fine. Next, I'm going to install the thermometers in the side of the file cabinet. Just, uh, there's this little nut and washer. Just screws in like that. Just slide the probe in, and then tighten the nut, you're good to go. Easy as can be. As you can see here, I'm installing four thermometers, one on the side of each drawer. I put it on the side because that's going to be a more re representative reading. If it's too far to the back, too far to the front, um, it starts to, to get a little off. Um, and also, I want to be able to measure the temperature in each drawer because the temperature is different in each drawer. These thermometers are cheap and so simple to install. There's no reason not to put one in every drawer. The back of the file cabinet drawers have some adjustable dividers which you can either remove by unscrewing right here. You can just pull the whole thing out. You can slide it forward or you can use it to separate your meats if you like. Whatever floats your boat. One thing to look out for when you drill the holes for the thermometers make sure that the hole is higher than this. So that when you open and shut the drawer, this doesn't whack into the probe, which is sticking about this far into the file cabinet. All right, so now I'm ready to season the smoker, run some smoke through it, get some heat build up, see how my temperatures are doing, and uh, test it out. 
I've got some wood chips here. These are uh, the Weaver brand, and I've got some Mesquite Fire Spice. Um, I got these for $3.95 a piece. Uh, that includes shipping on Amazon.com. That cheap 1100 watt stove worked perfectly for producing tons and tons of smoke. It, it worked great for smoking salmon or jerky. Uh, as long as you didn't want to get over 180 degrees, it, it just works fine as is straight out of the box. However, if you want to get hotter than that, you have to hot wire the stove because the stove turns itself off once it gets to about 180 degrees. So what you do is you go in, open the stove up, and there's a a wire going into the knob section and a wob wire coming out of the knob section. Just disconnect those and then fuse them together. You want to do that mechanically by stripping and twisting them together. I soldered it but it wasn't the greatest idea because the heat can melt the solder and it can come apart. But it's really simple. It takes about five minutes. It's one screw to put it back together and then it'll just stay on all the time instead of turning on and off at a certain temperature. Then you can regulate the, the temperature by simply opening or shutting the bottom drawer a certain amount. If you don't want to fuss with an electric stove, you can burn lump coal in the bottom drawer and just regulate the temperature by regulating the airflow by how much you open or close the drawer. You can also add insulation to the file cabinet in cold weather to try to keep the temperature more even throughout the drawers. Um, that costs about eight dollars really easy to install my recipe for brining salmon is really simple take a gallon of soy sauce bring it to a boil take about a pound of ginger slice it thin throw it in there and boil it for about 45 minutes an hour crush about 20 to 30 a cloves of garlic about the same time boil it with the ginger once again about an hour add four cups of sugar and add a gallon of water and then you're good to go after it's boiled for the hour, you want to go ahead and take out all the cloves and ginger so it doesn't get too potent while it sits overnight. Then you take uh, your chicken, for instance, and just uh, soak it in that for about 20 hours. And, or you take your salmon, in this case I had 25 pounds of frozen salmon, and just put it in a big pot as tightly as you can. Cover the whole thing in the teriyaki sauce, the brine and just make sure it's floating and let it sit for 20 hours. For short ribs, I like to marinate them in Korean kalbi sauce. Uh, it's a great Korean marinade you can get at the Korean supermarkets. It's a nice thick uh, Korean barbecue sauce. I just cover the uh, pork ribs in the kalbi, cover it, once again let it sit for about 20 hours. Once you know what you want to cook, you need to build racks in the drawers to hold your food. For drumsticks, I use the 2x1s and put a 1 inch hole right on the edge of the 2x1. I insert it into the top of the drawer and then I can hang the drumsticks by the joint from the stick. You want the 1 inch hole to be close enough to the edge that the opening is about half an inch. That seems to be about perfect. And once again, you make it exactly 16 inches so it slides right into the top of the drawer. And as you can see, it works like a charm. All the drumsticks slide in and they hang upside down like that. It's really, really a great way to do it. Uh, pretty easy to make. Shelving in any smoker needs to be versatile and easy to adjust because you're usually not cooking the same thing every time. So if you want to cook more chicken or less chicken or more fish, then you need to be able to adjust the shelving without too much fuss. So here's my system for doing that. Pretty much take a coat hanger and string it across the top of the drawer and put a cooling rack on top of it and a cooling rack underneath it. That's how I do my uh, pork ribs. Really super simple. Um, as you can see, you just want to keep the pork ribs off the ground, off the bottom of the drawer so the air can circulate underneath and the smoke can get all around it. And uh, the little piece of coat hanger strung across the top easily supports the cooling rack and another uh, set of ribs. Uh, which you baste liberally in Colby. And then for the salmon, I take some hardware cloth and I fold it over a couple times and I put it on the bottom of the drawer. Enough so that I can put salmon fillet skin down and there's space for air and smoke to circulate underneath them. Then I take two by one 16 inch sections, put it on the top and another layer of chicken wire hardware cloth and I've got a second layer in the drawer so I can fit even more salmon in there and that works really well. It's easy to take in, really easy to take off. And uh, in this uh, setup, this time I had two drawers with just salmon. 
and as you can see 25 pounds of salmon fit pretty easily in two drawers. So the top drawer I put the thickest pieces of salmon that needed to cook the longest and then in the second from the top drawer I put the thinner pieces of salmon that could cook at a higher heat and then on the bottom drawer I put two racks of pork ribs and about 12 uh, chicken drumsticks and of course in the bottom drawer had my element. Turn that bad boy on and it starts smoking up a storm. Had this thing smoking for 18 hours in total and uh, Tommy even helped me out. And one of the key with the ribs you want to marinate it so get a little squeeze bottle of Colby sauce and a brush and whenever it starts to dry out pop it open and get it wet again. You, you want to keep the outside wet all the time. And that's uh, make sure you get both sides and don't forget the one on the bottom rack. Uh, either use a meat thermometer or a, a little sampling method to tell when it's done. The pork ribs got done uh, first for me but how long it takes to cook really depends a lot on weather conditions, how much heat you use. It really varies a lot. And uh, my first uh, pork ribs in my file cabinet smoker, they turned out all right. I'm no pit master, but they were okay. The uh, chicken took a little bit longer uh, because it was uh, closer to the uh, door's uh, entrance, uh, a little bit cooler spot, but they uh, worked out just fine and uh, really nice, deep, rich, smoky flavor. And they came out looking really, really beautiful. Once I removed the pork and chicken, I lowered the temperature so that the bottom drawer was nice and cool for the salmon. Now the, ideally the bottom drawer is about 180 degrees, which makes the top drawer about 125 degrees, which is a really good temperature for smoking salmon. I did about 18 hours for the salmon, and it wasn't overdone by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the salmon starts looking brown and starts to toughen up. The thinner fillets uh, start to get kind of firm and easy to pick up. The thicker fillets kind of fall apart. It's perfect, absolutely gorgeous. And the ones on the second drawer from the top got a little bit better done, which I like, and just absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, that's good salmon. If you like that video, don't forget to check out some of our other videos, including how to make a great channel catfish bait with jello and hot dogs, and six of my best bank fishing hacks. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.